Hello, my name is George C. Bradley, and today's presentation will be on testing the assumptions of one-way analysis of covariance using SPSS. With a one-way analysis of covariance, each individual or case must have scores on three variables, a factor or independent variable, a covariance, and a dependent variable. The data set that I will be using for this presentation is called Clinical Trial 1, and it is a study on depression. You can see the independent variable, the factor is ME primine, and ME primine is the will equal 1 and the placebo will equal 2. The baseline equals the covariance and the baseline is the before information on the depression rating scale and the post 6 weeks score on depression rating scale. That score is the dependent variable. This information is online and it's free. Before you conduct a one-way analysis of covariance, we have outlined here five major assumptions that you have to test before you conduct a one-way analysis of variance. We will move toward reviewing those assumptions. We're now in our SPS data set. And we're going to look at our first two assumptions. Number one, the dependent variable is normally distributed by each level of the independent variable. And number two, the outliers. Let's go to analyze and let's go to descriptive statistics. We'll go to explore. And when we go to the explore, we'll look at the dialog box and we'll look at dependent list and we will put post six weeks in there and in our factor we'll put our independent variable there we'll go to statistics and as you can see we have descriptive information we also have outliers we want to click on outlier and click on continue we want to go to plot and we want to click on histogram and click out of stem and leaf and click on normality plots with tests and continue there and I think that's everything that we need at this given time and in our display box we want to make sure that we have um, both Okay, let's take a look here. We have some missing cases here, and that's a little large. And we have the information that we can look at with the skewness and the kurtosis. But I'm going to move down to the superior wilts. And when we look right here, and we look for normality there, we can take a look at both the placebo and the ME primine and both are above 0.05 so that means we would fail to reject and when it's above 0.05 we have evidence that we have met the normality test As you can go right here for the placebo, you can see that you have a normal shape. And as we have the one for the ME primine, that is a normal shape. And we have the QQ plot that's pretty straight. And as we can see right here, with the placebo 
everything is good with outliers, but we'd have to make some adjustments here with uh, ME primine, and that is a synthetic compound used to treat depression. And you can see we might have some problems there. So we are good with number one, and we have to make some adjustments with number two. Now let's take a look at number three, the linear relation between the dependent and covariant by each level of the independent variable. Let's go to graph. We can go down here to plot dot. We can look at matrix scatter and hit define there. And this is already set up. Let me try and reset this right now. And then we will go with our, in our matrix variable, we go to our dependent variable, then our covariant. And then right here in the row, we'll have our independent variable. And as you can see, now we will hit OK. And this is for assumption three. And as you can see with each one of the boxes, we have the, the linear shape. The linear shape and each four of these boxes here, you can see it has almost that 45 degree angle there and we would that would sh have a met for assumption three let's go to assumption four um homogeneity of regression slope and we would go to general linear model unit variant okay and let's reset here Go back, our um, independent variable, fixed factor, baseline with covariant, dependent variable here. Important thing here is the model. We want to go to customs and move these over to our model, but the important thing here we want to hit control and click on and get both of these in our model and we can check with plot we can get out of that and we can go here to plot and click this over here add this doesn't have anything to do with the assumption but this is to prep it when you move to analyze the one-way analysis of covariance and you can put this information over here and so you don't have to do it twice when you move into that we're not going to use this for the assumption not yet but the homogeneity test we're definitely going to use that one time okay right now we click on that information and the main thing we want to look at now to test for number the fourth um, assumption the homogeneity of regression slope we want to go right here to the interaction with the dependent variable and the covariant and that is not significant and when it's not significant that means we met we met that assumption we can go back here and all the information is displayed let me go back unit variant go right here to model and we can change this to our factorial model and i can click there and everything in here is set up we did that beforehand and we can click here okay I think the most important thing now is assumption 5 our Levine's test of equality and we can see that it that is not significant 
so there is no significant difference within our variance so number number five is met homogeneity of variances and you can see that this is significant when we actually conducted our analysis of covariance just a quick overview all of our assumptions were met with our clinical trial study and the only one that we had to make some adjustments was assumption two and that was outliers are there any questions and if you have any questions please contact me george c bradley 59 excuse me george c bradley 59 at gmail.com thank you